Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I'm going to show you three different ways you could edit an image in black and white in Lightroom. A couple of things. First of all, in this video, I'll be using Lightroom Classic, but what I'll be showing you will work in all versions of Lightroom. Second, it may be rather obvious how to edit an image in black and white in Lightroom, but in this video, I hope to give you some tips that will help you get a better black and white edit. We're going to be working on this image. This is an unedited RAW file, and of course it is in color. If you've watched any of my previous YouTube videos where I talk about my workflow, or if perhaps you purchased my Lightroom Classic training from my website, you'll know that I have a very specific order of events, things you should do first when editing an image in color. More specifically, the first four things you should do. Now they're all optional. They may not be needed on all images. For example, if I were to do a color edit on this, the first thing I would consider doing is reduce noise if needed. This was shot at ISO 64, so it doesn't need noise reduced. The second thing I would do if needed or if wanted, I would crop the image. Now in real life, I would probably crop this image. I would probably pull it down from the top and make it tighter. But for the sake of this video, let's say we like the crop the way it is. So the first two things are optional. I would reduce noise and or crop. And those are interchangeable as well. Um, in some videos, I probably did crop first, then reduce noise. It really doesn't matter which order you do those first two. The third thing you should do though, and it is again optional, is choose a profile if you don't like the default Adobe Color Profile. Now you can use a black and white image and convert the image into black and white that way, and I'll be covering that in a moment. But let's just say I'm still doing this color edit and I like the Adobe Color Profile. The fourth thing you should do if needed is adjust the white balance. So that should be the next thing you do, the fourth thing you do, and again, it's optional. Now, for a black and white edit, I have a similar order of events in that the first two are the same. I would reduce noise if needed. I would crop if needed. Then, if I did want to use a black and white profile, I would do that next. In this case, let's just say I don't want to use a black and white profile. The fourth thing, though, the white balance adjustment is not needed at all because we are going to be converting this image to black and white. So don't worry about white balance. The most obvious way to convert an image to black and white is just to go over and click on this black and white button. Now, the advantage of doing it this way is if you were editing in color, you'll notice down here there's a color mixer panel or tab. As soon as I click this black and white button, that becomes a black and white tab or panel. The advantage of this black and white tab, this is also called the black and white mix, as you can see right here is whatever color was in the image. For example, we know the sky was blue. I could go to the blue slider and move it down to make whatever was in the blue in the original color image darker. So I'm making the sky darker. I could move it up to make whatever was blue lighter. So you could kind of affect the tones in the image with this black and white mix. So with the yellows, I could affect those trees. The greens, I could affect the trees some more. Oranges will probably affect something in there. Yeah, see what it's doing there. So you can mess around with these this mix. So that is a huge advantage when editing a black and white image by clicking on the black and white button is you have this black and white mix. But there's some other things you could do that will affect the tone that you may not be aware of. For example, I told you to skip white balance altogether if you were editing this image in black and white because you can now adjust the white balance sliders to get a different look to your black and white image. For example, I just click the black and white button. I adjusted my black and white mix. Now I'll come in and I'll move this tone and look what happens here. You can see how it's dramatically affecting the image. So you could come in here and tweak things. Temp won't affect the specific tones as much. It will just make the image brighter or darker generally, but you could come in with that. Another thing you could do to affect these tones is to jump down to a panel or tab that you probably rarely use. It's the calibration tab. If I go here and I adjust, say, hue or saturation in the red primary, you'll notice it's affecting the tones as well. Same thing with the green primary and with the blue primary. So you could come in here and mess around with tones as well. So those are a couple things you might not have known that you could do to a black and white image. And those are all available, meaning the calibration adjustment, the black and white mix, and 
the actual white balance adjustments are all available when you click the black and white button. Now, let's go back to our unedited color image. The other way I mentioned near the top was that you could choose a black and white profile. Now, there's some advantages and disadvantages to doing this. Uh, first, the advantage. If you choose a specific white, a black and white profile that does give you the black and white mix panel, that's a huge advantage. For example, if I go to the profile browser and I go to the black and white section and I just hover over these, I could get different looks, right? Let's say I just like this, um, I like this black and white 06. So we'll click on that. So I've just applied it. I could go up here to the amount slider and I could make it stronger or weaker. And by the way, if I make it, let's say all the week, we weak, it doesn't reintroduce any color. It just will affect the actual black and white mix kind of. So we'll make that a little more intense. Now, by choosing that specific profile, it did give me a black and white mix. So I could further come in and adjust things with the black and white mix. So that's kind of a huge advantage in my mind. Then on top of that, the uh, white balance adjustments still work. Right? And the calibration adjustments also work. So that's pretty cool. But, there are some profiles that won't give you a black and white mix. Uh, let me reset this. All right. And let me go back to the profile browser. And instead, let me choose one of the profiles I sell. Uh, we'll go here, and there's one that I really like, and it's called black and white infrared. So this gives you an infrared look. When I created this profile, I used a LUT to create this profile. A LUT is a file that's called a lookup table, and they're more prevalent and more common in the world of video editing. You would use a LUT to get you to a certain specific video standard uh, for a log file, it's called, or you might use a LUT for a creative reason to give your image a specific look. In photography, we tip, you know, when we use them in other apps that use LUTs, Lightroom doesn't use light LUTs. But in other apps like On One Photo Raw or um, Luminar Neo that use LUTs, we would use them for creative reasons to give a specific look. But uh, you can create profiles in Lightroom by using a LUT. So you can, it's a sideway way of introducing LUTs into Lightroom. And for this specific example, uh, the LUT, when you use a LUT to create the profile, it does not give you the black and white mix. You still have the color mixer. And you could move in these sliders here, but they do minimal. Uh, you can see they do some things, but you could come in and try to move things around here as well. So these, obviously, you got to come in and, and try them and see what they do. They might give you unpredictable results, but they are there for you to mess with. Uh, these U saturation and luminance sliders, um, you could try and just see if you could edit it that way. It's a little more difficult, though. Uh, but the calibration uh, adjustments still work. So you could do stuff with the calibration. And you could do stuff with the uh, white balance as well. You could see you get dramatic differences there as well. So that's something to be aware of when you're working with profiles. Most of the profiles will allow you to have the black and white mix, but there are some profiles, specific profiles that were created using a LUT that will not allow or just convert that color mixer panel into a black and white mix. So be aware of that. Now let me reset this. Now there actually is a third way, and this is the least common way to convert an image to black and white. Uh, you could go to the basic tab and you could just go to the saturation slider and take it all the way down. You'll have a black and white image. Now, it will not give you, though, the black and white mix panel. You'll still have the color mixer. So you would come in here and you could still try to move things around and see what it does. You could see here it's not doing a lot, if anything. So it's a real disadvantage uh, doing it this way. Let me reset this. Uh, you can, though, it will work with the white balance. You could see not as much, though. And it will work, although not as much, with the calibration sliders as well. You can see. 
So why would you want to do this? Why would you want to take the saturation slider down? Well, you would only probably want to do that when you want to have a little color still in your image. So if you're going for kind of a washed out color look, but you still want some color there, then you would take saturation down. And then you could come in and you could adjust things the way you typically would um, with the color mixer, with the white balance, and so on. So you could come in and move things around this way. So that is the probably the only reason why you would ever want to move the saturation slider to get a black and white image. It's when you still want a little color still in the image. That's the way to go. Other than that, the way you should go is either with a profile or with just clicking the black and white button. Those are the most popular ways and they are the best ways. But a lot of people don't realize that adjusting white balance after you've converted to black and white with either the black and white button or a black and white profile and going to calibration and doing adjustments here will affect that, affect that black and white image. So hopefully those are some tips that will help you get a better black and white edit.